Hey there, my name is Provis and welcome to more Ixian aboard the Tycoon Space Station in the Amorton Solar System, which is very exciting for us. We did discover the remnants of the Protagoras in the last video, and yes, I'm going to try to pronounce it correctly from here on out. I really don't know why I got stuck on Protagoras. Protagoras, Protagoras, that's the way you do it. So you can all stop yelling at me now. Anyway, with this discovered, we have a laundry list of new tasks that we need to fulfill in order to get out of chapter two and move on to chapter three. We need to repair the superstructure, provide resources, which will become apparent once we continue some of the events over here, mine away the ice that is trapping the system, and research the retractable telescopic pole, which I'm pretty sure is gonna give the tycoon the ability to jumpstart the Protagoras using our electrical grid, kind of like you would jumpstart a car battery. However, that will mean that we need to move the Tycoon Station into the ice field, which is going to be a little bit nasty, so I'm hoping not to do that until we absolutely have to. Speaking of moving the Tycoon, I do want to move this station over somewhere like toward, let's say, Parenti 85, because there's a lot of resources nearby, and I don't want to gather those all up a lot faster than we have them. Travel time is starting to really hurt me right now, but we're getting better, we're getting better. Uh, I also really want to kickstart our colonization project over by DeVille 59. And in Sector 2, we already started working on the Colonization Training Center. Didn't finish it because it was out of alloys. But now that we have some extra, let's go ahead and finish this up now. So the idea behind this, though, is you can take 15 non-workers, right? Not regular workers, but non-workers only, and train them up to become colonists. That does, however, take some electronics to pull off. I am going to transfer over, let's say, 30 or so non-workers from Sector 1 into Sector 2, and that should be fine and we'll start training some people up to be colonists once I can. So we need a minimum of 30 colonists. That means we need at least a minimum of two electronics and 30 non-workers uh, in order to get this going. 60 is better, though, because at some point later on in the game, we're going to need 60 colonists. So if we can go ahead and do that now, I really don't mind. But again, we need more silicon to make that work. Let's go ahead and start training up the first 15. It takes five cycles per batch of 15 uh, colonists to be trained up. So I'm going to go ahead and work on that. Now, something else I'd like to do is get myself a specialization for this sector. I'm going to build up two of these insect farms over here. And I think that's supposed to be enough to get me a specialization. Let's see. We'll have one, two, three, four, five, six food buildings in sector two. Now, I don't know for sure if this works because some testing has shown that it's not quite enough. I don't know if you need to have a minimum number of farming plots in a crop farm for it to count? Maybe? Don't know? If it looks like it's not working, we'll try building this out and see if that helps us. But we should already have a specialization in Sector 1, and we do, a space specialization because I've got four space buildings. Docking bays load and unload faster, and hull repair is a bit more efficient. We like that. That's great. Okay, so we have these up and running. How does it do for my food supply? We're now up to 114% of our meal requirements. That's plenty, obviously. Uh, as far as policies, no, it did not create this specialization, boo. Um, let's try building out one of these, maybe two, let's start with one. I know, I know, spending alloy is probably not the best of things to do right now, but I want to find out what the heck is going on over here. See if we can get this specialization, because, as a reminder, the tier one food specialization is going to reduce my water consumption, so ice goes further, that's a good thing. And also, it's going to increase the amount of waste our farms and stuff produce. The more waste we produce, the more I can convert that into things like alloys over here, which is obviously a pretty big deal. Oh, wait, that was enough. There we go. One more farm. All right, so apparently getting five here seems to be a minimum. Either that or it's a total number of, let's say, you know, in this case, it's going to be eight plus five. I don't know. There's a certain amount of food buildings and stuff we need. What matters is we got it to work. So there's less water and all buildings in this sector produce more waste. Excellent. It worked. Now, I do unfortunately need to build out a lot more batteries across both of my sectors, not just one. Which is unfortunate as far as, like, spacing and stuff. I'm not a big fan of this arrangement, but if this is what it takes, so be it. Uh, the reason we need that is I need to transport the Tycoon. It's going to take a fair bit of time to transfer anywhere, right? So, like, two cycles to get to Parenti 85, which is a very convenient location. Um, however, it is not simply enough to store up power across the entirety of your space station. You need batteries per sector. So I need one more battery in sector one to have more than 2.1 cycles worth of backup power. I need to build three batteries over here. So that's going to be at least another 160 alloys, just like that, in order to actually be able to transport around. 
unless we're willing to accept that at least for a little while, we're not going to have enough power. Okay, we've got a third battery built over here. I'm letting that charge up. We're actually capped out on alloys, which is a very bizarre feeling to have right now, but I'm all for it. Sitting okay on some iron, getting some carbon, need a bit more silicon, but we've used up all my electronics. This should be the last batch of colonists being trained up right now, so we're actually looking pretty good on that front. So let's go ahead and take, let's say, not the Heisenberg, where's the Gannets? Apparently you're stuck somewhere, tell you what. Yeah, we'll send you over to DeVille 59. Where is the Gannet? Oh, I turned the I turned the Gannet off. That's why it's not here. Right, 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 right. Let's go over here to DeVille 59 in anticipation of having all those colonists, and we'll be able to start that process. I do have enough science to actually do some research. And now that we're done with the Legislative Strengthening Center, I finished all Tier 2 stuff. So, the first thing I'm going to do is research the intelligence la- I need 35 science. Dang it! I was going to say, we can do this to get 5 units of science every 5 cycles instead of 3. That is a 40% booster in my science. So, I mean, I feel like that's probably good to go, especially since I think there are going to be a lot of scientific upgrades I very badly need. We don't technically need them, but I mean, like, they're going to help. They're going to help for sure. So, have we arrived over here around DeVille? We have. Let's take a look at this. So, we've landed on DeVille 59. Despite the cold and harsh climate of the planet, the atmospheric conditions and gravity are remarkably similar to Earth's. There are large bodies of frozen water on the planet's surface. We can establish a very basic colony, which takes 30 colonists, plus a bunch of resources, or an advanced colony, which takes 60. I don't remember exactly how much better the rewards are for doing this, but I'm pretty sure it's good enough to justify. So let's go ahead and establish the advanced colony, taking all 60 of my colonists. And we will launch, let's say, you, I think, the Grail. And go ahead and deliver a load of food, which I've got plenty of anyway. And uh, plenty of alloy. We do, by the way, have 2.1 sectors of power in all sectors. Excellent. All right, so let's go ahead and move the Tycoon over to Parenti 85. I think that's going to be fine. Still close to some iron and to some silicon and carbon. And it has to be done anyway, because at some point we've got to be moving the Tycoon Station over to Rokentansky so we can easily launch some exploration of this sector, because there's one more point of interest over here. Also, I want to eventually move the Tycoon to DeVille, so that when I want to go to the Protagoras, it's going to be a lot faster to get there. The less time we spend moving through the ice field, the better. There's apparently another point of interest that I've neglected over here in the ice field. Let's go ahead and launch a probe. Find out what the heck's going on over here, just south I say south, it's not exactly how it works in the solar system, but okay. Uh, just a bit further away from the Protagoras. Huh. Tatra V8 with 30 science around it. I don't remember finding this the last time I played this. Maybe it, maybe, maybe, I did. Got a little bit more science to work with. Um, okay, let's think about what we want to do here. So I could go for some upgrades for the EVA airlock. The shaping worker behavior would boost up the efficiency by another 10%, which definitely lets our alloys go a bit further. That said, I also just had a major accident at our steel mill, and it's kind of put my infirmaries to the limits. I could go for reorganization of care. Not a bad plan. Store more stuff, spaceship construction, blah, blah, blah. Nothing there is going to be helpful. Don't need any of that. I guess I kind of like the idea of just going for the upgrade for things at the infirmary. That's something I need to do anyway. Uh, the accident we had at the steel mill put 20 people in the hospital. We only had beds for 15, and a bunch of them were already taken up. So if we don't get some additional space over here, there's a good chance that some people die. Not that we're really struggling for people right now, but there's no sense in losing people if you don't have to. Should be just about done with the colonization efforts. There we go. All right. So it is now established, and they will periodically transmit reports with valuable field data. Excellent. Now we can leave the planet. And here's the advantage of the colonization effort. It's producing science for us. Hooray. Okay, we've gathered up all the science around Tatra V8, and I've put that toward researching upgrades for the batteries so that these things go a bit further. And, oh, I remember this one now. Okay, I know what we're talking about. Extremely violent hurricanes move through the atmosphere. We were having difficulty maneuvering and fearing we'd be struck by lightning. Yeah, this one's a trap. No matter what you do, people will die. And remember, we promised not to lose anyone in this system, so we actually are going to leave the planet. Also, science ship name. Well, that seems like a bit of a bug, but okay. Yeah, uh, I think you can get a cargo ship out of the arrangement. It's just guaranteed that a couple people die in the process. Uh, because of what I said I was gonna do, or rather not do, it's just not worth it. Let's go ahead and send these guys back to the Tycoon. Let's, um, let's go ahead and get the alloy development. I said that I was gonna do it, and I stand by it. It's still worth doing. 
Maybe it would be worth getting another round of solar panels on this sucker for some extra power. We're getting a little bit low. I'll go ahead and do that now. Might as well. And, yeah, if we're committing to this... Let's go ahead and turn this thing back on. Whoa, and that's too much power. Turn it off, turn it off! <laughs> yeah, see, and that's sort of the problem, isn't it? Um, uh, uh, mm, mm, mm. What can we turn off real quick? Hang on. How about we turn off the waste stockpile for a second, then get this back on? Sorry, guys, it was just a blink. It's just a, just a quick, quick little brownout, all right? All right, you know what? I think 2.9 power is good enough. We'll have a very brief moment of no power in Sector 2 on our way over here to Rokantansky. Uh, we have over half of our HP. I feel like that's good enough. Let's go ahead and begin the transfer. Which, once again, we have to have a nice little cutscene showing that off. What else should we do with some science, by the way? I think I am going to go for shaping worker behavior. Let's just go ahead and boost up that repair efficiency by another 10%. It just makes these alloys go a lot further in keeping our ship nice and healthy. Also, just kind of increases our resting equilibrium, which is going to be great because at some point I may... Ooh, I didn't even know you could see this from over here. That's awesome. Um, we may want to consider opening up another sector in the near-ish future. So we've arrived, yes? Okay, perfect. Um, all right, so it's very important that from here you make sure you turn off any of the trajectories that could get your ships killed. For example, I don't want anyone collecting down over here because that's going to get some people killed. So we're trying to avoid all of that. Let's go ahead and take a look at launching a probe right over this way. Uh, it's a bit risky. If we're right on the edge here, you can see that we don't have any red if I'm just like this. That's what I'm shooting for. All right, launch the probe. There's also a lot more resources to be had over this way. Holy crud, that's a mother load right there. Boom. And all of this is nice and safe. Whereas before, if we were located literally anywhere else in the system, we couldn't have had access to these resources. What? People died from injury? Mm. Ugh. All right, fine. Whatever. Let's go ahead and get the additional beds for our crew quarters. We know we're going to want that no matter what. That's always going to be a very beneficial thing for me, especially if I open up some more sectors or if I wake up a load more people. Because remember, the Protagoras had a ridiculous number of uh, cryos beds available for me. I think it was like 950. Kind of a lot. And over here on Chevy 34... We have reached the core. Metallic and prismatic formations rise from its surface, reaching impressive heights. They disappear into the gaseous atmosphere. Some are surrounded and spanned by geometric rock clusters, accumulated during the slow growth process of the formations. They shear the winds that sweep across the core. Uh, we can, once again, spend a load of alloys in order to get a lot of science, and I still think that's worthwhile. What else should we consider researching? Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. We could go for more upgrades to the batteries, yeah. Or we could go ahead and get an upgrade for the mess hall, an extra 20% people. Yeah, and that's worthwhile because uh, I don't want to have to build a second mess hall in my sectors if I can avoid it. That's just a lot of real estate that could be spent on literally anything else. And again, if we're going to be building up our population, thanks to all the cryopods from the Protagoras, we're going to need to have that extra capacity eventually anyway, so let's just go ahead and do that now. That did not take long to complete. Let's go for an upgrade for the batteries next. Ah, ah, okay, okay. This is the sort of thing we want to avoid. The Grail is about to go straight through the storm trying to get over here. Um, 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 um where are you going? You're going over here? Uh, water. No. Off. Off. Change direction. Go literally anywhere else. Literally anywhere else, bud. Anywhere. There we go. There we go. That's the kind of stuff you got to watch for. Don't let these guys be stupid and go flying through the obvious storm of infinite death. What do we get around Chevy 34? We get, uh, predictably, another 60 science. It's like there's a lot of the same kinds of events in this game here. I don't know. Uh, let's see. The Chevy 34 does not possess any subterranean systems that would facilitate exploration within the core of the planet. However, we did locate a fissure that led to the observation that the formations must originate from deep below. Science analysis returned colossal m measurement estimations. The characteristic shape of the formations is thought to derive from a combination of electromagnetic interference and self-similar space particle resonance. How fun. All right, we got an extra 15, apparently, from an alert. They just spotted a gigantic molluscoid near their position. What? Really? Okay. Um, sure, investigate. And no, it was actually just another geological formation. Well, all right, that's that's fine. Let's uh, just go ahead and collect 75 science off of this planet, and we'll be sitting pretty over here. Honestly, that's a tremendous amount of stuff. I love it. 
Well, what can we do with all that science? You know, I can do things like make the tycoon move faster so you don't need as much power in order to get around, nor do you have to risk as much uh, hull integrity starting to fall apart. That could all be pretty good. Because believe it or not, I don't plan on staying around Rokantansky for very long. I actually want to move the tycoon over to Deville 59. This is where I want to be, because that's going to make it easy to, one, gather up all these resources around here, and there are a lot, but also make it very easy to get over here to the Protagoras. Let's go ahead and research the retractable telescopic pull, just so I don't forget it and accidentally use up all my science and feel like I have to sit around and wait for a very long time. I don't gain any immediate benefit from that, but it is necessary to restore the Protagoras, so we'll go ahead and do it anyway. We can actually go for another upgrade of the steel mill now that I have the alloy development. 10 iron becomes 15 alloy. That's actually really, really quite good. Okay, so the last of all of these resources have been gathered up, which means we should be now free to move the Tycoon elsewhere. It's going to take 3.1 cycles. We should be able to handle that. Yeah, we can, actually. We're completely fine. All right, well, I don't see any reason not to just go ahead and do this. Then let's go ahead and move the Tycoon over to DeVille. Once I do get to DeVille 59, something I'm going to need to do is go to our station, and we need to build up the retractable telescopic pole. 60 polymers to get this sucker built up, but I've got so much carbon around, who cares? Now, on DeVille 59, we should have finished all of our experiments. We can repatriate the colonists, or we could sever communications and leave them to die. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna do that. 60 more colonists is obviously a lot of hous housing, but it's fine. We had housing for them before, we can do it now. Let's just go ahead and grab these people and bring them back. Besides, those colonists will be put to good use in later chapters. So, yeah, there's literally no reason to leave them behind. Just bring them back. There we go. 60 more colonists go back into the pile. Uh, we do need to pick them up, though, using a ship. Um, how about the Quicksilver is going to focus mostly on doing that. Yes, pick these guys up, please. Should be really quick, though, because it's like literally right next to the Tycoon, which is why I timed it out the way I did. Let's send the uh, science ship back over to the Protagoras, because I think it might be time to go ahead and start working on some repairs. So what do we need to repair the superstructure? 100 alloys and 60 polymers. Uh, yowzas, that is expensive. But okay, let's do it. Something we could do is start making the Tycoon's hull a little bit stronger. One, so it takes less deterioration while moving, which will be very important later, I think. Also, less damage from impacts. Now, I don't remember if that helps me in the ice field or not. I'm pretty sure it does help you if you had to move the Tycoon through here, you'd take less damage. But ideally, you're not doing that anyway. What I want to do is take less uh, deterioration as I'm traveling through the ice field, heading toward the Protagoras. Um... So, researching that could make sense. I also am pretty sure this is going to be very important for us later. Mm. Other things we could do include some upgrades for, let's say, my polymer and electronics uh, manufacturing, or plasma cutters boosting our repair efficiency even further, up to 15%. You know, I am going to try getting the kinetic compensation jacks. This might be a mistake, because I don't actually remember if that applies here. I'm about positive it's going to be very important at a later date, so it's not like it's a complete waste of technology. But does it help me right this second? No, I don't think it does. Will it? Maybe. Or we'll have to wait till a later chapter to really see the value of that tech. Okay, we have finished with the repairs there, so the superstructure is looking a lot better. An invitation was found that had been left for us. Some of the older members want to meet with us. Um, I don't think we actually want to do this, believe it or not. I'm trying to remember, but I seem to remember a couple of scientists disappear, which I think counts as a death, which I think would make us violate this Dangers of Space Exploration mission. In fact, yeah, I very much remember that being a thing. I don't think I'm going to take that event. It sounds crazy, I know. I'm, I'm trying to remember. You know what? Okay, you know what? In order to show you what I'm talking about, all right? I'm going to show you, and I'm just going to save, okay? And I'm going to reload. That way I don't take any of the consequences, but you guys get to learn what I'm talking about. Let's see what comes out of the events. Uh, the elders, as they call themselves, have told us their story. They are among some of the last members of the crew to remember Earth. Many in the Protagoras do not remember their pasts. The elders blame Dolos' cryonic technology for this phenomenon. They testify to a significant difference between the crew of the Protagoras and that of the Entamananki. The crew of the Entamananki was mainly comprised of people who had lived on Earth almost all their lives. 
According to the elders, Vol technology is more than just space travel technology. They believe each Vol jump by a Dolos vessel generates cataclysm of equivalent to the, that initially caused by the Tycoon. Frau's Tycheons, they say, are the root cause of this. And the fact that the UN self-similar space travel technology does not utilize these particles means their ships do not leave such cataclysms. The discussion lasted for some time. Lois Keller and Casper Haptman have decided to stay on the Protagoras with the Elders. They do not want to follow the Tycoon's mission anymore. You lose two members, and as a result, yeah, we lose that mission. That's what I'm talking about. And that's why I'm saying, don't meet with the Elders. You gain nothing, you lose too much. But we do get a little bit of lore, which is interesting. So, crazy question. How do we feel about moving the Tycoon over here to the Protagoras now? It'll take two cycles, yeah, and we're gonna deteriorate a bit in the process, but we can make some progress. All right, let's go ahead and do this. Um, now, we're gonna find out exactly what happens when you go into that ice storm. It might be reduced because of the technology we already took. Maybe, I don't remember for sure. Maybe it'll show me. So what is this event we are getting right now? Adverse space weather conditions can cause severe damage. Uh, we should avoid entering these effect uh, areas using our EKP systems. Try to avoid it for 20 cycles. Look, there's nothing I can do about it. We are here, all right? We are absolutely here. So the hull and our EVA workers are at risk the longer we stay here. So the sooner that we can deliver all of the uh, alloys and food we need to, the better. That should be all we need to do with the Protagoras. So, we have a new objective. Welcome the crew. <laughs> and this is where we needed to have the extra capacity in our infirmary, mess halls, and housing. Because now, 250 people want to move into our station. The resources necessary for the well-being of the Protagoras' crew have been brought aboard. The station's core systems are now online and operational. We spoke with the crew of the Protagoras. It is clear that most of them now wish to pursue a different goal than exoplanet colonization. With their tachyon calculator stolen by the UN and their ability to generate Vol coordinates with it, they say they will no longer attempt to reach Remus. Instead, the Protagoras will become a place for life in perpetual displacement. As there are only two sectors of the ship functional, however, the crew accept they must reduce their numbers if they are to have a chance at enduring such an existence. While some will leave the Protagoras with heavy hearts, comforted only by the knowledge they are giving their crewmates the best odds of survival, many more actually wish to join us on the Tycoon and see the mission to reach Remus through to the end. We must welcome them on board the Tycoon before we leave this system and the Protagoras behind. All right, we are done with that. Thank you, goodbye, return to the Tycoon. So with that taken care of, we now need to pick up a lot of people from the Protagoras system. We can actually stop forbidding this now. There are 50 workers and 200 non-workers to deal with. The Tycoon, however, at least for now, does not need to be here anymore. So let's go ahead and leave the ice fields. We're now at the stage of the game where it should be just a matter of collecting resources and getting things set up for the next 250 people. So back over on the Tycoon. I'm going to take the minigun offline and unassign this one. I can't, but it is cannot be unassigned while docked. Dismantle? No, I don't want to do that. I wanted to get another cargo ship. I guess we could unassign the Heisenberg for now. That would be fine. More cargo ships just means I can start collecting more resources so we can get out of here and end Chapter 2 a little bit faster. So how are we going to prepare for all these new people? Uh, the answer is I'm going to open up another sector. Let's say this one over here. A couple of electronics, bunch of alloys, some food, and yeah, a whole bunch of workers. But we have plenty available over here in the sector one. At least we should, I think. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I got more than enough workers to spare right now. Absolutely no problem whatsoever. So let's go ahead and get this thing opened up. Now we got to think about what we want to do with this next sector. We have a bunch of different options in order to specialize it. We could go for a population center, but I don't think that's going to be the best way to go. We could go for an industrial center and move all of our industry, like the steel mills, the electronics factories, and so on, over here so we get a boost. That's not a bad idea. Or we could set up a recycling center so we can have multiple recyclers, waste treatment centers, and start getting even more efficiency. Or we could go for a cryo center, which is to say... We have a mess of cryo uh, cryogenic pods, right? We move our cryonic centers over here, and we set a policy to only wake up workers. That's going to have a massive stability penalty, but it's contained to one sector where I can build lots of stability buildings, 
and then we can control the type of people that we're getting from these cryonic pods, so I guarantee I have really effective workers. That is also an option. I think I'm leaning toward either industry for now, or maybe one of those cryonic centers. Let me think about that a bit more. Now, let me think. This would work, but does it help me? So what is the bonus from industry? I need to remember. I think, I think it's just batteries last longer. I do not remember if it applies to only the sector or everything, though, and that means that batteries are not that important. One thing we could do is actually have this sector for both something like industry and waste, because I'm pretty sure you can do multiple specializations in the same sector if you want. Tier 2 specializations are possible if you put an even more building of the same type, but it's really difficult to pull off, and honestly, the bonuses probably aren't worth the investment. But if I wanted to do this for an industrial sector, and I could still place down, let's say, four um, recycling centers, I don't need all of them right away, but eventually what recycling does at Tier 1 is make recycling buildings produce 30% more resources, and you don't take a stability penalty, or at least a lessened stability penalty, when waste builds up on the station. So, it's a good way of trying to farm out a lot of extra resources, and remember, waste can turn into a ridiculous amount of stuff. There are technologies literally to boost your waste. So it's an option for you. By the way, I didn't mean to accept the transmission, but apparently something's happening over here in the bottom right. We have the Vol signature of the Antemanonki. Okay, so we can follow after them if we want to. You know what? Just for fun, I think I am going to do this. I'm going to go for the industry and a recycling center specialization over here. I know, I know. I don't know if it's the absolute best thing to do. Um, the last time I played this, uh, I actually did create a population center, and it worked pretty well. But I, I kind of wonder if I can make something more interesting happen with this. So that's why I'm changing things up. We're going to get our DLS center set up over here. Of course, that means we need policies. Let's go start with the intense propaganda, like so. And of course, before we be able to do any recycling over here, we have to get that policy up and running as well. But that's fine. We got plenty of time. Fun fact, by the way, you don't have to keep this thing on to still gain the benefits. It's just to continue with the cooldown for the policy. So, for example, over here in Sector 1, we benefit not at all from having this thing on. It's unnecessary to continue getting the extra propaganda. We can keep this thing off if we want to to save some power and so on. Of course, now we have to rework all of the logistics over here to make sure that this is properly going to reflect what is needed. So, polymers and carbon need to start migrating over here. We're going to start having a lot more iron transferred over here. Ultimately, kind of all of it. Same thing with the silicon. Yeah, there's a lot I need to reorganize. And a lot more people need to be housed over here as well. With my science, something that would be worth getting probably would be the Dometic Quarters over here. That is going to be another stability upgrade if we can get enough of a percentage of a sector's population in those quarters, and they are just objectively better in every possible way. More expensive, of course, but that's fine. Now, what do Demotic Quarters cost instead of Optimize? Basically, they cost a lot more alloys, and they cost an Electronic. So, it makes people a lot happier in high-quality accommodations, but you definitely are going to pay for it. The good news is... If all goes according to plan, we should be getting so many resources here that I really don't have much to worry about. It's cycle 631. We could absolutely end chapter 2 and leave now. But why? Everything's still looking so good for us. Shutting down the last of the factories off in this direction, and we're gonna start transferring all the raw resources over here. Gotta say, starting with a fresh sector is great. It's letting me feel a lot better about my placement of buildings. This is so space efficient compared to what we had been doing. Okay, at this point, I don't see how much better we can possibly hope for things to go. I've moved over all my factories over here. We don't even have enough storage room to actually dismantle everything over here, so some of these buildings remain. But we will be getting rid of them very shortly. Actually, we just have to just quickly grab some of this stuff, and boom, gone, done, easy. All right, so all of this is going to be taken down, otherwise looking great. We have industry up and running. We got recycling up and running. We've gathered up pretty much all the materials I want. Now it's a matter of how many cryonic pods do we think that we want to take on? Because uh, we're pretty stacked out on things like iron and stuff. Not much more I can expect to do here. And we do, by the way, have our specialization. Batteries lasting 20% longer. There it is. Hooray. All right, we're kind of capped out with what I can store with now with cryonic pods, and I don't really see a lot of point in going up toward, like, uh, 500 and losing even more stability. Our population's looking really good at over 1,000 as is. I honestly think this is going to be good enough. So I'll let the Quicksilver grab one more round, and from there on, we go ahead and tell every ship it's time to return to the Tycoon, because we're ready to end Chapter 2. Is that it? I 
think that might be it. All right, let's activate the Ixian engine. And let's just go ahead and bend space time a little bit. So does this mean that we're launching a new cataclysm? Because like the Protagoras, they're still back there. Did we just like destroy their world? Because <laughs> I think they may have made a slight miscalculation. Oh, I see space debris. That's not a good sign. Woof. All right, look at these solar panels we have now. Oh my. Oh. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Um. Huh. What happened here? We have not reached the exoplanet Remus. Well, that's just downright disappointing. Okay, uh, right. Let's, uh, let's pause. Fate of the Atemenanki. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. And welcome to Theta Crucis. This is the new star system we are in. And this is a pretty terrifying looking storm that seems to be taking up almost the entirety of the system. There's a destroyed commander center nearby. This is certainly one place we're going to be going. But for now, I think this is a good place for us to end this video. We made a tremendous amount of progress in the last video. Three sectors active is going to be great for us. I've got the makings for an incredibly strong economy going into this. Of course, that can change very rapidly. So don't get overly complacent, but nonetheless, we're in a really good spot. I've even got some leftover room in each sector to build up some additional stability buildings if necessary, and we're ready to continue specializing. So thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and are looking forward to the continuation of Chapter 3 in Ixion. If so, I would ask that you hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, make sure you hit that notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.